Good day. Today we're going to do lesson one of grade four, term two. Um, in the right hand side corner, you will see the link to the DBE book. So this lesson links to um, worksheet 25 and 26. Let me show, quickly show you so you can have a look at that. Um, let's go back to the lesson plan. Then the next section is the link to the CAPS document, to the curriculum document. Then we have the resources that we're going to use. There's always a did you know question. You can pause the video at any time and read that. Um, then we have the dictionary. The dictionary will then give us an explanation of the words that we're going to use in this um, lesson. Um, the learners don't have to learn or learn the definitions for these words. The most important part is that they understand it. Then what we have is we have the mental maths section. This is where the learners can come now closer. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask them, the, we can ask them the questions orally, or you can write down the answers. So you can pause the video at this stage, or you can simply read it to the child. So let's quickly see. 3 plus 2 is what? 8 plus 1. 1 plus 4. 5 plus 3. 7 plus 2. 8 plus 0. 2 plus 2. 3 plus 4. 6 plus 2. 4 plus 6. You can pause it here, and then you can quickly mark it together. Let's then go to the... The introduction, so after we did the mental maths, is to get ourselves mentally fit for the lesson. Um, we're going to do whole numbers. Now we can go and look at what is whole numbers again. Um, and there is a little definition. Um, you can pause here and let the learner read it. You can read it as well. Um, and then what we're going to tell the learners is that in this activity, we're going to count in whole numbers. We're going to compare and order whole numbers we're going to look at place value and rounding off. Remember, a lot of these are um, things that we already did in term one. That's a revision. The number ranges just might be a bit higher than what we did. Okay, so we're going to scroll down. You can read the beginning and the, and the, the examples. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at these number lines. Now, each of these number line, there is a number circled. So we're going to look at the number that's circled, and then we're going to ask the learner to tell us what is the number before and after. So let's quickly see. What number is before 2008? 2006, and what number is after that? 2010. So in what interval did we count? We count in twos, because if we look at the last digit, 6, 8, 10. Let's start from the beginning, 2002, so the last digit is a 2. Here we got a 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So we counted it in twos. Let's look at the next number, 5021. Which number comes before that? Which number comes after that? So let's quickly see. We have 21 here. We got 18, the last two digits, and 24. So in what intervals are we counting? We're counting then in threes. So if we look at the last two digits, it's 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. So the next example then is the number that's circled is 9,785. Which number is before that? 9,780 or 9,790 is after that number. So if we look again at the last two digits, 55, 60, 75, 80, 85, 90, we see that we're counting in fives. Um, so that will also help us if we want, need to determine the number that comes after 9,790. So let's look at the next numbered line. The next numbered line is 8,033. Let's look at the last two digits of each number. So here we got 23, 33, 43, 53, 63, 73. What is the difference between 23, 33, 43, 53? Yes, that's correct. The difference is 10. So we counted in intervals of 10. Let's look then at the next number line. 7,100. Which number is before 7,075? And the number after that, it's 7,125. 
let's look at the last two and three digits. So here we got 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150. What's the difference every time? The difference is 25. So we're counting in intervals of 25. So let's look at the last one, 6,524. If we're going to look at the last two digits, they all remain the same. So what we need to do is we need to look at the last three digits. 324, 424, 524, 624, 724, 824. So the difference then between 324 and 424 is 100. So what we do here is we count in hundreds. Let's go to the next example. So the next example is example two. So what I want you to do is, after I explain it, I want you to pause this activity and then answer the following. So what you do is, you write one number and next to it you write the next number. Leave a bit of a space and then what you're going to do is you place then an equals, bigger as or a smaller as between those two numbers. Do that about five times. So for instance, if I'm going to look at 5,377 and 5,376, 5,377 is bigger, so I'm going to use the bigger as. So the opening of the symbol shows to the number that is bigger. The smaller part shows to the side of the number that is smaller. Then what we're also going to do is you're going to take these numbers and you're going to write them in ascending and then descending order. So ascending means you're going to write these numbers from the smallest to the biggest. And descending after that, you're going to write it from the biggest to the smallest. Let's look at example number three. So example number three, we have numbers that are red and numbers that are blue. So if we look at all the numbers that are red, if we look at the last digit in this top row, we see it's one, two, three, four. But if we go down, we say, look at the first and the last two digits, 1, 11, 21, 31, 41. We see every time they end on a 1, here they end on a 2, here on a 3, and a 4, and so on. So what do we see? Which of these numbers are even numbers? That's correct. All the blue numbers. Which are the odd numbers? Yes, correct. Those that are in red. Let's go to example number four. Now, example number four, I quickly go and close the numbers. So those numbers are closed. So if we look at these place value cards, we've got a 3,000, a 500, and an 80, and a 9. What's going to happen if we write it as one number, if we add those? It's going to give me 3,589. If I'm going to add these numbers, it will give me those numbers on that side. So at this stage, Pause your computer and then what you're going to do is for each of these rows, you're going to give an answer. Let's then go to example number five. So in example number five, we're going to revise rounding off. So here what we're going to do is we're going to, we need to round off four to the nearest ten. So the easiest way always is to ask between which number or which 10 is 4. So 4 is between 0 and 10. So anything from 4 and smaller will go to the smaller number, and from 5 to 9 will go then to the bigger number. So between which 10 is 4? It's between 0 and 10. So if we round off 4 to the nearest 10, it will be 0. 
Let's look at the next one. Round 58 off to the nearest 10. So the question that I'm going to ask is, between which two 10s will 58 be? So it will be between 50 and 60. Here is 58. So anything from 55 will be rounded off to the nearest 60. So 58 will be rounded off to 60. Let's look at the next question. Round 250 off to the nearest 100. So the first thing that I ask myself is between which two hundreds will 250 be? So the two hundreds will be 200 and 300. So 250 will then go to 300. If we round it off, it will be to 300. Round 635 off to the nearest 10. So the first thing is if we ask 635, we're going to ask between which two tens. Now look here. Between the tens is 630 and 640. Just that small part. And then 635 will be exactly in the middle. And if we round it off, it will go to 640. But what if, if we ask to round of 635 to the nearest 100? Then we ask the question between which two hundreds will 635 be? So it will be between 600 and 700. So if we got 635 here, it will be then rounded off to 600. The last one is 7,000. This is a bit of a more advanced question. So what we're going to ask is round 7,000 off to the nearest 10,000. So the first question again, between which two 10,000s will we find 7,000? It will be between 0 and 10,000. So there is 7,000 then. So if you round it off, it becomes then 10,000. So now we're going to start with our workbook activities. So firstly, you could use your DBE book and here are the, the worksheet numbers and the questions that you can do. Mental mathematics, we're going to practice addition of tens or you can download SA Teachers worksheet from our website where the learners, these can then be printed and they can complete it. Then, at the end of the lesson, we always have a problem solving. Don't skip this. Because what we try to do is we try to create learners that, are be that will become problem solvers. That's why we do mathematics. Then we have some extra activities. These are coming from old papers. Anna was an old test that learners always wrote. Um, but it can come from all other, um, like the Maths Olympiad, all type of questions that were previously asked and the way it's been asked we will place here remediation is always if the child struggled a bit here's an idea that you can do um, a lot of time we try to do it practically you don't need fancy papers and cards you can make this from scrap paper as well then parents and teachers we come to the consolidation with the consolidation, what you do is you're going to read each statement and say yes or no, can the child do or not? Yes will be good because then we can move on to the next lesson. No, you need to redo some of the activities, maybe using different methods, or you can always contact us as a teacher for any support. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.